So, from my experience so far, I bought, the, I bought, I can't speak. People that are out there actually selling homes. You guys need to stop these things because karma, karma gonna get to know us. Karma is gonna get to know us. That's you feel for sad. Come here, say so when me feel for sad. That's why you feel for sad. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I am your girl Kenesha. Finally, I get the chance to do a sit down video. Sit down, sit down video from home where we can actually talk. Now, before I started this video or before I thought of doing the video, I had so many topics to talk about. I'm a spirit in a tech, none of them. And so I just wanted to talk to you something totally different from what they have written down. And it's about being a first time home owner. Because I feel like everybody out there who is aspiring to buy, buy aspiring to buying a home should know these things because for everything that I've been going through or that I am going to be going through, I'm gonna feel like that everybody needs to experience that. You know? It is very demotivating, it's very very frustrating overall. And people that are out there actually selling homes. You guys need to stop these things because karma, karma gonna get to know us. Karma is gonna get to know because there is no way, like, you know what? Let's, let, let's go back. Let's start back from the beginning. First time homeowners. There are certain things that you need to be looking for, right? Certain mistakes that I have made that I think could actually help you guys. So number one, do not get an inspector referred by the realtor to inspect your home. That makes sense? And I'm not saying my realtor actually knew about this or did that purposely. I mean, no one think he did this purposely, but I get to understand that an inspector would actually inspect and he will not fail a bunch of things like the major things and because they want to ensure that him and the realtor can get some money. That makes sense? So you may have a realtor telling you that, okay, house is good, you inspect, you, you actually look over the house, you like what you're seeing and the inspector come in and might find one and two minor things and you work through that. Um, but at the end of the day, the major things that were going to actually be the problem, that was never pointed out. And you'll find that out after you actually move in. So, from my experience so far, I bought, the, I bought, I can't speak. Oh my God, let me drink sun juice. Never should also say that I'm not feeling well. This temperature change has been drastic from 80 degree to 40 degree to 50 degree. So I go back and forth. It kind of messed me up, so I'm so not feeling well right now. My throat hurts, my head hurts, my eye hurts. No COVID. So, my head are all over the place right now, so I apologize for that. But as I was saying, my experiences so far is I bought this house to see all the things that were inspected that we actually have an issue with. First thing, electrical. Now, I have a split level house, and what that is is basically um, it has an upper, a middle. It has like four different levels to it, right? Now, the extreme top level of the house consists of three bedrooms, which would be my younger son's bedroom, my bedroom, and my daughter's bedroom, along with a bathroom, right? Actually moved in the night. We actually moved in on um, March 13th. It was a Friday 13th, 2020. That was when COVID just like one with itself and the town it all locked down, the whole place all locked down. And we had to move out of the, the landlord house that we were actually in because we didn't plan for paying no money, no, no more rent. We actually have a house. So we move in into the house. We realize when we turn on the hallway or the passageway light, it has a flicker. Okay. Now, when you turn on my daughter's room light, it brightens up. But my daughter's room light is dim or nothing at all. 
when they turn on the bathroom light, now everything bright. Mm, that don't make no sense, right? Now, I remember before moving into the house, when I actually came to see the house, the, there was a baby's room that was set up in my daughter's room, which means that they were actively used in that room, as well as my son's room, right? And obviously, they had the master bedroom. So they were utilizing it, so they knew. This was never stated on any paperwork that we have that there was electrical, electrical issues up there. The inspector that came actually checked, in from, checked the whole thing and he passed it. And when I contacted my realtor, I get to understand that normally the inspector only checked to make sure that there is current passing through and not necessarily how many, how much current. So they would not know whether or not, you know, it had an issue or not. Okay, all right, fine. That went on, we literally just got that fixed. I had to have the whole thing rewired. I think I can imagine that's not cheap money. All right. Six months after moving into the house, we also realized that we start having a backup of sewage inside, we would have called it the third floor. That's the level before you go down into the basement. And that level you have my older son's room, branch off to the garage. You have a pantry area and um, the laundry area and another bathroom that's right here. Now the lowest level of the house where the water can come from is actually that lower bathroom or that second bathroom. So we started realizing that, um, and again around the six months if not earlier, we we're doing laundry. The water started coming up into the bathtub, into the, it's a stand-up shower actually, into this from the, the toilet, start overflowing. And then it start coming from the laundry area where the water goes out. So that's all out here. So luckily it was not no drastic sewage, sewage water, you know what I mean? We had to call, um, people for call look funny and realize that, and this again, we literally just bought the house. So we actually spent up all this money already, right? We get to understand that there is roots growing outside into the pipes. Hey, you want to tell me, say, the people who sell this house never noticed before? The way how the, root, the roots were so bad. Well, first of all, the roots were going into the pipes. And the only solution to get rid of this, apart from snaking it once in a blue moon, we have to now dig up all the outside pipe and pull out the tree them from out here. The people in there are charged with five grand for getting this done. We said, we now have that five grand of work we're doing now. So we'll do that at least at the end. So we start doing like the snakings and everything like that. Snake out the pipe every two or three months. Try to make sure we throw things down under the pipe. And avoid using certain things to make it plug up, right? We went to Florida. And since we came up from Florida, it's like everything just that the whole house just start tumbling down. I get all stuff up down. Hold up. Wait a minute. We start washing again. My son was actually washing before he went away to college. And the water starts run over. Again, try to get frustrated and can't manage this, da 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 da. Seems to over over. Seems like all of this right now is damaging the whole of the floor. We call this other place. They want 10 grand. We do the same thing. Other people in the world took 5 grand before. Where would we get that from? We have a son now going to college. We have all that money we need to be paying. And all these things just to come up from vacation. Anyways, we electrician tell about this other company. And we end up in charge of 48 to do the whole thing. You pull up the roots, the trees, and everything. And we re the whole outside. Thank God to Jesus. I'm all set with all this. I'm all set with So that is finally done. The other thing that we made that that we found out. 
Oh Jesus, this house. The other thing that we found out afterward was that once some of there and what's up just keeps on going up and up. Now anybody who live a jammy live a fire now said what's a bill normally no big deal. Normally lower than than all the other bills. Water bill come to hundred dollar, then you move to two hundred dollar, then you move to three hundred dollar water bill. Are we not nothing different in the house? We call it the water company. We go and check it out. The matter is, maybe if the tank a leak, maybe this will happen. We do everything we need to do. Still nothing. Then come and check it out. I realize that the meter just a run so when all of the water, all of the pipe turn off. The meter just a run so. I still can't figure out what happened. No. We realized that uh, in the laundry area, now we stand on the other day to shut the, the laundry. The floor is just hot, like the baseboard is just hot. Why is this baseboard so hot and there's no heat turned on? My husband and his friend, who does like some form of construction, actually um, started digging up the floor because we forget so the pipe, this pipe must be somewhere underneath here. So something must be underneath here, so to cause all this for the happen. Lo and behold, then tear the wall of the floor downstairs. Or to find the what the hot water pipe was busted underneath the ground. The leak just keep on a spill. I spew all over the place. So that I have to fix. Luckily then could I fix that, but now that left me to redo my whole floor. Thank God that camera was a build down. So we could have that sorted out. So that's back to normal. An electrical panel after the electrician come and fix where my fix. Electrical panel full of water. Full of water. The breaker, you pull out the breaker, just a turn it so it will say water that's below outside. The wall place after revamp. The wall piping after re after do, re redo. Forget a re um, new panel box and everything. Breaker, everything. Start to all of that again. I see all of this to say, if this inspection was done correctly, we would have found out all of these things and we would not have bought the house. That makes sense? Because it would have gone through the whole inspection process and verify exactly what was going on. Don't get me wrong, some of these things maybe they wouldn't have found out, like the little piping underneath the ground, maybe they wouldn't have found that out. But I know that in terms of the electrical system, the electrical issue, they would have found that out. If we remember dig with a deeper, we would have found out what the whole sewage thing too. Okay, because I see on the ground. When it's actually start looking, we see where the board was lifted because of all the water problem. Thank God we never have it as bad as some people. Because I realized that it's a big concern of a lot of people over here because of the bricks, um, the clay pipes that are actually laid in the ground. They eventually start pulling for a few minutes. After a while. Another thing as a first time homeowner, make sure you do not buy any house in the winter, especially if you're in those states that actually has snow. By not summer or spring, you can actually see the yard. You can see the grass, you can see how everything was taken care of, you can inspect. We found a whole bunch of groundhog that were actually live, living underneath our porch. There were like 10, if not more of them. We couldn't see these things in the snow. We actually bought this house in the winter going on to the well. It was still snow, snow. We came and actually was looking on the house. Because the thing about this house is that we were supposed to get it from the December. But these people were still in the house. They were actually looking for another house to buy. And that should have kind of just pick up and know there's something wrong. But Troy was actually curious find out why they sit in the house because it's a big ass house well not you know not huge but it's livable for you know a family of five four so he was curious he was asking and he asked them why are they still in the house because they get me wrong it's an, as I say it's a nice house but their response to that question was um they need a bigger house now keep it in mind that it's a mother it's a husband and a wife with a toddler looking like two year old and a newborn baby. Four bedrooms, two bathrooms. 
living, dining, kitchen, porch, deck, garage, basement, attic, like a whole whole of space. Them are four with two little picnic and me are five people we have that moving at the house. With one almost adult at the time. One medium middle picnic. <laughs> And one toddler at a time. And you want somebody to say, you're moving with your baby two picnic. I'm moving one number more than I feel. And we're moving into this house thinking it's a big house and you want a bigger house. That should have actually made me realize that something like one. But no, really nice. It's kind of like a house. So we can expand all these things. We can do all these things to the house. But no, we know. But karma is a bit just myself before. Anyways, from the outside, fine grown hog. Woodpecker for days funny because we have wood siding. And in the ground, like we have a huge backyard, right? But then we also realize that the back of the yard, like half of it, when it rains or snows, it sinks. It's just very soft. Because you have like a house that is behind us that has like on a little hill. So all the water actually literally just like flows down into the back of the yard. So that has like a little sink. So when you when all I want to come and stick up on this, so you know what your foot is are sinking. So now we don't have to with my all of my um design I'm having on my head. For me, imagine running in the backyard, we're gonna have to like fill it up or get it, you know, settle with some stone or something, get some people come fix it up so it can actually be you know firm. Again, that's a money. Well, it's fine from the outside. Apart from the fact that they did the walkway and stuff, we want to fix that. That was not on them. They could have fixed it still, but that was not on them. We saw that before we moved in. Oh, they said I tell you that when we moved in, they want to write how we find. People are calling them just nasty. Me and the long end of the first night, I wrote just around up and I was like, them live here. Like, I feel them place that we are trespass. So that was another mission we had to do to get rid of all, all of those rats before we, before we could actually live comfortably in the house. And I'm not normal. Rat for days. That they started us. It's like, when I try to fix everything one one by one at first, we're thinking of selling the house. Okay, it's never worth it. But the fact that I'm actually, I'm actually going to do this whole sewage thing and the whole electrical thing, I don't feel like I want to sell it anymore. I'm just don't make it into the dream house. Because I'm not gonna jump from out a frying pan and jump in a fire, but another house. So people just take time and just the chop and then sell it and put it on the market and tell all these lies. I'm not into doing all of that right now. I mean, I'm mad. I now know what to look for. But I feel like I'm gonna go through all of that. So if I now buy another house, so I may start from scratch and build from scratch and know exactly what is going there, I don't think I'm moving. The other thing, check out on the taxes before on it buy the house. Check out how long it was actually evaluated and stuff like that before you move in, because that caught me too. When I was buying a house, the property tax was like 3,000 something. So I'm like, this is reasonable. That, that, that I can do, because all the other houses that we saw, keep in mind, we saw better looking houses than these, but it was always something that had too much tree in our backyard, I'm afraid of tree with all of them beer and something there. Um, the master bedroom was too small. There's always something, the kitchen them ugly. There's always something. So this house, it was not the house, but it was something that we could actually work with. I saw potential with this house versus what I have what I saw with the others, right? I don't know, there was something about the house that kept you. Then so what is yours, it's yours, right? Like a few of you. So I figured it's, it's a female house. Regardless of what I got you, what I go on or whatever, I can make this into the dream house. So that is my, my aim. But, um, as I was saying, what did I say? Yeah, the property tax. So the property tax, it was 3000 and something. And I'm like, okay, the fact that this house have almost everything that I want. 3000 I make can't take time and just expand and put on all the additional stuff them that I'm not seeing that I really wanted. And then that will bump up the tax to like five grand. So that was my hope and dream. In the middle of closing, my realtor called me and said, Kanisha, do you know how to increase the taxes? And I'm like, what? Please, no, no, no! They increased the tax 
to like 150% of what it was. This tax went all the way over to 500, 5,000 something. Now we now have to pay in the middle of course it's gonna be our new tax. So we move from three grand add. And it was not listed that this was gonna be changed, just changing the amygdala, everything. And if people know, can I receive paperwork on it? But again, this was not explained. I had the opportunity of like giving up the house or whatever, but I was in the middle of moving already. I already said my landlord said I'll move over everything and then I put up in house for rent and saying, like, do I go back and do you know, stay there? Like, me just say no what? Free it. I and mean, I make like the original I do already, so let's go with it. But I cried. <laughs> I cried. I'm like, I can't believe after waiting so long for this house and this start happen. Keep saying, man, again, we're supposed to move in before Christmas. But you know, wait until we are March to move in after next year. But anyways, now we have to hold off because what I really wanted to do with the house, um, the house has one car garage and I wanted two. That was one of the main things I was looking for. Um, so I saw where it was, we would we were able to do an extension based on the yard space like you know we can always put one extra garage over there so my master bedroom is actually on top of the garage so once that is extending then i can actually push over the, the um extend my master bedroom add a, um, a master bathroom to that and a walk-in closet build one little balcony from the front so and also i saw all of these things i'm like we can't do that that would make me get almost everything i want uh, it was a furnished basement so that was a plus and I'm like, there's so many yard space in the house, in the yard, so we can actually just add on one extra bedroom to turn on one guest room. So my mother come up, my mother have one little space, you want to go bathroom or something. But right now, if I add, I'm still gonna do it. I still have to. Um, that's still in the space. But if I actually add anything funny right now, the property tax it all go to our whole six, seven grand. Because it's then gonna turn the house. The house is now a four bedroom house. It's now gonna turn the house into a five bedroom house with three bathrooms, two car garage. Yeah. So, people, I know I went all over the place. This may not be the best um, video to help you guys because of how I've been rambling, but it's just a lot. So, the bottom line of this video is make sure that you're prepared. You have backup. You have people to inspect the house before you move into it. You have you listen to what people have said to you. Um, and I just push because that is the house where you feel like it's supposed to be yours. Just go ahead and inspect and use the initiative and 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 you you know you look six cents with a gun in your back of your head to say oh it's not for you it's not for you and don't fight it sometimes we, as a city host you want to jump in that immediately but inspect it um thoroughly don't for me i actually just you know settled because i was tired of looking i was looking for a home for like three years and it was getting very frustrating every day we open the road i look for the house i look for the house and when you finally find something like them them them, them be out video or some shit like that don't settle, buy where you want. You know, settle for the house what you want, not necessarily because you feel like there is opportunity for the house. But buying a home is not easy. And secondly, it I think is the best investment overall. Don't get me wrong. But when you buy the house, make sure you have a little bit of savings because you're gonna have a whole bunch of issues. Hidden stuff that you did not know about where you have to get it fixed and you know have no landlord for call to say, oh, this now has work, this now work, whatever but not you know come come fix it. It's gonna be up to you to get everything done. And um if you don't have the money to get it done right away, you know, you're gonna be in a deep mess. You get the inspectors them for inspect the house properly and you look out for your electrical them. Some of them water tank when they claim it's a neat, um, new one they install. Some of them just bitch it up and then something there. Your furnace, make sure everything's sorted out. Make sure you check out your um, the hole, whether it be gas or oil. 
just look out for gas i think is better but right now we have oil because i have no gas running in this area i just wanted to rant a little bit about that because i am going through a bunch load of crap right now in this house that i'm going to fix up and i continue to fix up front ever since we buy the house but i'm not turning it into my own house i'm not turning it into my home my dream home i have so much to do up on the outside i need to do the siding new siding i need to get my door changed i need to do my stair the outside staircase my walk my driveway my my little walkway i'm not gonna sell it i'm not gonna sell it until i get richer youtube start paying me and i'm actually just just buy a new house like completely build it from scratch so kenisha says never settle Never settle because you feel like you are frustrated or you can't do better. Always aim high. Always go for what you want. All right? Until later, guys. Bye. Come here, say when me feel for sad. Say when you feel for sad.